Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. It's December 10th, 2023. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. And welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the bear podcast of indeterminate length, episode number 721. And this time we have both sides of the conversation and an extra person. Look at us. Yes. <laughs> Being organized, having it together. Everything's working properly. Maybe. Hopefully. <laughs> Does anyone listen to the live feed? Just to be sure. Hold on. <laughs> Let me check. <laughs> <laughs> everything's working fine. <laughs> I'm just cracking wise. Anyways. That's okay. Why am I saying all this, Gary? Well, because we're doing it. Let's talk about uh, again, and this time it's adulting. Redux. Uh, most people say Redux. Uh, part two. Dude. Try it again. We'll we'll rewind it and start over. <laughs> Something like that. Although I had to sticker a moment ago because when I looked over at the live feed, I thought for some reason I miswrote it. I wrote acting. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, wait, what? Anyways, it's been that kind of a day. That kind mm. of a weekend. But yes, Damon's with us. Fresh off the hot tour that the Cincinnati Gamers Chorus has been doing in the local scene of Southwestern Ohio. Welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wait, wait, what, what, what's the name of that, that group? The Cincinnati Men's Chorus. Everybody dance now! There we go. You know what? Okay, I'm gonna sidebar for a second and just tangent. Why is that the sound clip? Because, oh God. because the chorus isn't a dance troupe; it's a singing troupe. I think it was. It was my. I know it was my. Um, like tag, like phrase for a long time. My music cue for a long right. time. Well, and the reason and why I, we were doing that was because of all the times you would say Cincinnati men's chorus. Yeah. Right, but what just... I'm thinking about is like why why is everybody dance now? <laughs> the 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 cue for a for a men's singing group. It's, I'm just it's, asking it's, the question. It's more about the singing part that it was being sung in a in a it's like, true. That's you know, true. Yeah. Music. I'm sure if we went back in like the archives and 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 looked at like the like first times and such that would it would we would find out why we started doing it and we would get a good laugh about it. If only it, I'm might, not it might have also uh, uh, rolled over from the first generation where mm. we had a member of the Capital City Men's Chorus who would oh. say Capital City Men's Chorus all the time. Uh, CC the Men's Chorus or something, not shorten it. Yeah. Damon, I think you also did the same thing. You would always Probably. say Cap- <laughs> the name. Since Men's Chorus. <laughs> I probably always say since name is course, yeah. I do tend to say that, but that's because I love it so much. I will start. I do sometimes. I in the tags, I do um, CMC because that's also right. what we go by. But anyway, random tangent. Moving back. <laughs> Pull it back. Um. I think I just figured out the connection. What's the abbreviation you normally put down, Damon? CMC. Oh. And what's the name of the the group that did that song? It's CNC Music Factory. <gasps> oh. Ta-da! Oh, maybe that's what it was. Maybe we were maybe maybe we were maybe. actually like 
Maybe anyway. Ta-da! Oh, we were being witty way back in the day. Speaking of back in the day. Right, right. So here's the thing, kids. Recently, Jeff and I had a conversation, a lovely chat, if you will, about the passage of time in being cubs of a certain age. However, for those of you out there that listened to episode 719, it was a very one-sided conversation because we had a technical issue and we didn't catch it until almost the very end. So... Why not regroup, have a conversation, uh, and sort of discuss it, but uh, maybe have a little bit more focus. So we've all been in the bear community for quite a few years, um, and our journeys have been through some ups and downs. So what this comes up to is, you know, uh, I'll start with kind of something I referenced in the, <laughs> the episode. Do we regret growing up? Yes. <laughs> I love the short and sweet answer. The answer is yes. Oh, God. Because yeah. here's here's Go the ahead. thing. Go ahead. Picture it. January 2008. Okay. Which is how many years ago? 15. Right. Almost 16 years ago. And a group of people get together and have a little thing called a podcast. And that was the beginning of Cubs Out Loud. So... This thing has been around for a decade and a half. And the reason I bring that up is because we've all had experiences over the years. And, like, I don't really think about, like, aging or getting older until certain things happen, which I'll get into, how some Uh things have come up recently um, that really felt like this, like, uh, I wouldn't have, well, I guess I kind of would have done this when I was younger, but I don't know. It just, it hits different now. So... That being said, yeah, my first question was, do we regret growing up? Because I made a quip, I think, in two episodes ago about how, like, there is sort of a meme, and it was like, this is the dumbest idea ever. Like, like why did I why did I want to be an adult so bad? Mm-hmm. Because when you're little, you're like, I can't wait to be an adult, goddammit, because then, like, I'm going to stay up late, and I'm going to eat ice cream for breakfast. Like, I'm going to do all the things that I can't do because I'm a child or a right. teenager or whatever. And then, like, but no one seems to really tell you. Oh, by the way, like all of that freedom, quote unquote, like the abilities to do those things comes at a price. Yes, and, and that is you have to maintain your own life. So you have to have a roof over your head. You have to feed yourself. You need to take care of things. So you know, like. In the in the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, it's like shelter, sustenance kind of become things. And then, mm-hmm. you know, you're like, but I want to do more than just like have a roof over my head and like eat what I want to eat or drink what I want to drink. You know, it's like I want to collect all the things because we are children of the 80s and nostalgia is like commercialized now. Right. And so we just want to have all the, th- the stuff. Right. Exactly. <laughs> <sighs> Like you go, I go, when you ask the question, do I regret growing up? I, I always think, I say no. I feel like it's a no, but it's not a, like no a. No question mark? Yeah, it's a no question mark. Mm. Um, it's weird. Um, <laughs> we were just, uh, the, the, I, the concept of just like, aging and and doing things and being on your own i do remember having that feeling when i was younger and can't not waiting and can't wait to do it and all that stuff mm-hmm. and i think about it now and i'm like yeah i'm 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 glad i did because um uh, now i'm here and doing what i want and all that stuff and i still get to do it but yes i, I was well aware <laughs> from probably a young age that being an adult meant um uh uh, there was the price. There was a price. There was a very steep price. Mm. Um, and the reason I think in a lot of ways I had that is because I had older brothers. My two older brothers are seven years older than me. I think I've mentioned this before on the podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, so essentially they, I get to see, I get to see them doing mm. the adult quote unquote stuff 
before I become that. So I get an opportunity to really like understand and see, to be blunt, where they failed and mm-hmm. um, um, learn from it, as it were. Um, right. I also had the, um, on the flip of it, I had the unfortunate-ish um, situation where where our parents divorced, me and my sister and my mom moved into, you know, moved away from my dad. Mm-hmm. And I became the quote unquote man at the house without really not the whole like having to go get a job and all of that shit. No, not not that per se, but like the person that was protecting in a sense and um helping out with the with the more manual task, even though <laughs> not so much. Um <laughs> I know. I was see like, this, like girl. Girl, that manicure. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, this no. Well, I, this is this anyway. Never mind. This is a later. This is a later. These are later. These were later in life. <laughs> this was me taking care of myself. This was my thing for me. Anyway, uh, <laughs> for those that can't see, David's referring to like actually having a manicure. But you know, these are my nice. These are my nice nails that I take care of myself. Um, but um, um. But on you know, kind of on the other side of it, it was the like being the one that helped things because the mom you know was doing stuff and dealing with a lot of stuff and um, being like the impromptu adult without being the adult, but still being a child, like teenage. I was a teenager at that point, so um, I've always been mature for my age. I've been told that for a long time, and I agree with it, um, but. On the flip of that, I know myself. I still have the things that I enjoy that I'm that are still I would that some would consider child like or childish. I love cartoons. I love um, uh, games. I love like I've been playing D. I play D and D pretty regularly. So, like there are things that I think for me allow me to maintain that connection to childhood without um, being a quote unquote child and I think that's what helps me get through the adulting of things that's fair I, you know it's interesting when you said about like being like uh, how did you phrase it like being something for your age uh, sure sure, sure. yes yeah. um, I was an only child and Oldest of the grandkids on both sides of the family only knew about one side of the family. It's it's kind of complicated. I think I've mentioned before in the podcast, my mom's family, she was disowned for a couple of years. And so it was very VC Andrews story. There's <laughs> drama. Um, anyway, so I didn't know I was supposed to have two sets of family, like two sets of grandparents, aunts and uncles, cousins, all that. I just knew my dad's family. Mm. And so like I was constantly surrounded by adults. And so I acted more like an adult than a child and I didn't really have any childhood friends. So I hear you on the, like you are a little bit like different in Mm -hmm. how you handle yourself and move about the world. Um, And then my parents did divorce and kind of like you, that my dad moved away. Uh, I stayed with mom because she was considered the breadwinner in the separation. Mm -hmm. And so I ended up uh, assuming Presu- not presuming, taking on a mm-hmm. lot of the roles that my dad had. My mother was the breadwinner, so my dad was the one who took care of the house and cooked, cleaned, you know, kind of did the laundry. Like, mm-hmm. he was more the homemaker role and a jack-of-all-trades, like, had had jobs but didn't have a career, quote, mm-hmm. quote, like my mother did. So I fell into that role and did that from hell like 11 or 12 all the way through my teens and college years and a couple and briefly after college until I moved out because that's just how that was. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, like, I mean, I, the reason I asked the question is because I, I was kind of joking, but there is a part of me that remembers being younger, especially I think as a teen, yeah, being angsty and being like, you know, like I want to stay up and I want to do what I want and I want to go where I want and, you know, and not have people tell me what to do, you know? Yeah. Um, and that was not me. Um, <laughs> I will say that now. Um, and I think, again, like I, I, I hate like 
blaming on my brothers, but I'm blaming on my brothers. Like they went out in the ho- like out of the house and did all the shit and got in trouble for it. Mm. Like got and got punished and all that stuff for it for doing shit. And I mean they weren't the stellar, you know, youths as they were, but they, you know, because I think again, because of that, I was like, I don't want to do that. And on top of it, I um kind of similar to you, I didn't have a lot of like childhood friends i had people that i knew at school i had people that i knew at church but i beyond like those buildings like i i didn't interact with them socially um right um i lived in the neighborhood i lived in for most of my life after my parents divorced i moved away from so any of those connections dissipated due to distance even though it wasn't that far away it was still a distance away and if you're not able to travel, which I wasn't right. wasn't at the time, then you can't really do all those things. Um, and then, um, you know, like I said, like the 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 friends, quote unquote, that I had were connected to the places that I would be at. If I was at school, I had the you know school friends that I you know hung out with when I was at school, like go to lunch together because we were at lunch together, maybe the occasional out um, after school activity. But beyond that, it wasn't much else. So right. I was home when, you know, on weekends and, and, and stuff. And um, then um, we had church and I had the church like go you know, kids that were around my age and I hung out with and done stuff with, but that was usually Sunday mornings and maybe Saturdays during, you know, choir rehearsal and such. That was about it. So, and then once that was done, didn't really, you know, talk to them. And I mean, maybe that has to do with like not having like, you know, nowadays people have cell phones and, and all that stuff. They can connect with people. Um, but, um, I don't, I didn't have, I didn't have like people's phone numbers and called them and talked to them and, you know, texted that stuff like that. It was more just, right. I saw them in the building and then, oh, hey, have a good Sunday. And then I'd go home and be done. And then I'd see my work, my school friends Monday through Friday. And then that would be it. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think it's fair. You know, the, the change of technology over the decades is really a big factor, I think, in their upbringing. Uh-huh. And how we operate in the world now as adults. Like, what did I see recently? Someone was doing something. Oh, <laughs> okay. Well, this is something I didn't do as a child, but I was watching uh, a website that we've talked about on this podcast before. Um, and the person was on camera, but they like got into their shower. And my first thought was like, is that phone waterproof? Um, and then my second thought was like, like they were really kind of focused on the device and like doing like other things or something. And a part of me was like, if the point is for you to take a shower, take the shower. Like you really seem to be distracted (laughs) by the device. (laughs) And, like, so it got me thinking about how, like, the technology has changed. Like, you know, we didn't have that when we were younger. It's like when you went to go take a shower, you just went and took a shower. Like, like you didn't have a phone that was playing a podcast or a YouTube video in the background. Do you know what I mean? Or, like, you know, or on a phone call. You, you, like, you just... I love how you're like, <laughs> went to the shower to take a fucking shower. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like I, I didn't have all these devices and stuff. I right. was funny. I was looking. I was at random aside. I was at Walgreens the other day, and you know it's Christmas, it's holiday, what have you. I was walking past this thing, and I saw like one of the things, like random little Nick last that had like gift things that they had. They had this like mm-hmm. Bluetooth shower speaker, like. And I stopped at it, and I looked at it, and I'm like, oh, that'd be really nice. And I thought for a second, and I told myself, like, you're, you, no, you, you literally get, like you were saying, Gary, I literally get in the shower to take a fucking shower. I'm not dawdling. I'm not, like, <laughs> you know, I'm not spending time, like, right. you know, trying to, li- so listening to something, what would be the point? It'd literally be on for the, you know, 10, you know, 5, 10, 15 minutes, I'd be in the shower actually doing a shower. And right. then I would turn it off because 
I would be done with my shower. So. (laughs) (laughs) That's why you have like network speakers that go from, there's a small, small one in your, your bathroom that plays music and, or podcasts or whatever. But it's also playing on the one in your bedroom where you get dressed. So as you travel around, you can hear it all the way through. And while you're taking a shower, have you ever sung in the shower? Why not do some music that you're listening to instead of just singing in the shower? I I mean, I think it depends on what your personal priorities are. I hear you on the network part, Jeff, about the speakers. And I'm like, that's all fine and dandy. Until you forget that your phone is connected to those speakers and then you go on a certain social media site of some kind and then play a video and then suddenly everybody in the house is listening to what you're listening to. Now, for David, it's not that big a deal because it's pretty much just him and Jim. So I don't think Jim would be surprised to hear, you know, some daddy talking, you know, sexy talk in the background. Be like, Oh, yeah. You like that? You like that? Yeah. Anyways, um, <laughs> well, I was more referring to Damon's situation that you listen to it in the bathroom and then yeah. you take it with you to the bedroom, sort of yes. thing. Not your situation where he was doing things in the. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I um, know, like, even then. No, I don't connect my, uh, the, the, the ones that we have are connected to, yes, they're connected to my phone, but never sell the twins meet in that sense. I'm not playing <laughs> stuff throughout the house, except stuff through like, um, I have done it once I did. There was, um, a few times when we would, when we were traveling in particular, I had all of the speakers set to play music for like a few hours um at night just to kind of like give the idea that people are home and this is when we're up town. Um like the lights behind me in this room turn on. Um if I wasn't home, for example, they would have turned on at seven o'clock. Like the whole idea is to like if even though we're not home, have something's happening so that right. Um also, so we can get back on the adulting conversation. Um, yeah, buy a house. Um, mm, uh, well, I was going to say, like, in the course of the, of the years that the podcast has been around, like, we've had some life changes. Yes. Partners, relationships, marriages, homes, cars, moving, um, job changes. And, you know, it, it's interesting because I think, like, those are not things that I think about. Like, and I certainly don't forecast ahead and predict a whole lot um, on the on those fronts. W- one of the other things I was curious about is, like, do we have lessons we've learned that others may benefit from um, in terms of, like, getting older or growing up? Um, so I'll say this, uh, cause hindsight is t- kind of 2020. I just learned this, this past week that the bear club that I first heard of and joined and was like my getting involved in the bear community is, uh, no more. Oh, and that's a a 24 year chapter of my life that has come to an end and someone who was who was involved for a very long time and served like as a president and was a huge supporter did a lot of things for the club over the years recently posted on a social media site and tagged several of us that had been officers presidents and said like you know do we have memories from this um club and stuff and um, so that folks are aware, like, it, like there's a part of me that was really depressed to like read this. And then I had to do some research cause I was like, what is going on? Like, why, why is this happening? And come to find out, like there were, there was nobody interested in being an officer, um, yeah. not, not enough people to maintain a full board. And so they decided to follow the bylaws that we had created <laughs> like 
20 some years ago. And it said that like, if there was not a compliment of the officers, then the next step is to disband the organization and the mm. rules that we put together on how that happens. And so I went and found, and they, I've come to find out the website's already gone. Like I, like mm-hmm. I was busy looking at the social media stuff about how like this decision came about in September to October and by, you know, Thanksgiving, you know, the month, November, it was kind of done. And some people were, you know, were kind of sad about it and people were being nostalgic. And what I was thinking about is like all, so this is the, this is the lesson. All of the history is kind of gone. Like Mm. back when I was involved and I was an officer, like we had like uh, 20 some years of photographs Mm. and like stuff that were all digitized and were loaded on the website. And a couple of years ago, I visited the website looking for something and I realized they were all gone. Mm. And I was like. Oh, they got like they they don't post them anymore. Like they don't show them, and wow. it kind of bothered me a little bit because I was like, well, that's sad because like there's a whole like legacy. Like there's this whole historical record of like not just me but many people over the years like being involved in events, and um, and and I don't know what the decisions were because I did leave the group roughly. I want to say maybe uh. Well, 15, 16 years ago, like I, I, I had come into it in the end of 99 into 2000 had been involved for probably a good like eight years or so. It felt longer, but like, you know, I'd become an officer. I did a bunch of things, eventually was president. And then when, you know, they made the decision to be to shift focus and have a different president, I kind of felt personally that mm. I was big time getting the signal that like they didn't want me to be involved. Mm. And so I took that note and went on with my life, Um, you know, and had just at at about that time, a year or two beforehand had started uh, maybe three years before I started drench fur. So I like, you know, pivoted and put a lot of my time and focus into that. And so, you know, the, the biggest thing for me is looking back on that, you know, is I'm like, it's kind of sad that like all those years of time and effort and all that there's kind of not a record not Mm -hmm. much of a record um and this is what happens when we hand things off to future generations like when we give others those things unless you are thinking forward in that direction to have things archived to have them donated to you know create a historical record then that's not going to be the case so as an example locally our print gay newsletter has been around for i think over 30 years now i think um <laughs> i should know better because i'm on the editorial board but uh <laughs> but you know we or we're about to come up on 30 years i think so the thing is is that the editor in chief who's been in, you know, the editor in chief pretty much nearly the entire time, probably over a decade ago was like, Hey, there's this archive in Chicago that will keep digital records of all the print like media from the LGBTQ community. So they've been sending, like they, they did a big project several years ago, digitized all the hard copy stuff and has been sending it in so that there is a legacy record of this like kind of thing and that's what comes to mind as i was thinking about this and us coming back to this today is i was like it's really unfortunate you know like where is that record but i mean i think that's true also of our lives yeah like we we are a part of the generation that moved from physical media to zeros and ones being Mm -hmm. the media in essence so yeah you know the how we transitioned over time with that yeah and i would say that's one of the thing one of the if advice that someone, you know, regarding adulting and growing up, I would say, um, like, it sounds weird, but take pictures, make memories, um, keep it so that you can go back and look at it. It's been weird. Um, I was, I was looking, I had like a Facebook memory. I was looking at Facebook memories like a while back. Um, and it had, I had a memory and I was reading this post that I had posted like years ago and I, for the life of me, could not remember what the point of this, like what, who, who I was talking about in this post or who was this person that I mentioned. Cause it was like, ran into were you, an were, old you friend. were you vague posting on purpose? I don't know. It's possible. <laughs> there was a point in time where I would vague book, um, but it was, it was. 
you know, ran into this person for the first, like, for, you know, after a long time and all this stuff. And I was like, I genuinely do not know who I was talking about. Mm-hmm. And what would have been, again, amazing is if I'd had an in me at the time to, like, take a quick picture and, and um, you know, post it on the social media so I would know it, so I would know who the fuck I was talking about. I know it sounds tacky, but, like, I was looking at this post and I could not for the life of me remember who I was talking about. And that bothered me a little bit because I was, I, I didn't, I didn't under, I didn't, you know, I didn't recall. And it right. had been so long since I had made the post that it wasn't going to be like, Oh, that's who it was. Like maybe last year or so it might, I might have a better, might've had a better memory about it. But 10 years ago, plus years ago, I don't remember. Um, so it'd be nice. And, um, single, and I know it sounds weird, but same goes for like, um, I know we're in a digital world and what have you, but sometimes tangible things are nice. Now don't get crazy, obviously, but like tangible physical things are wonderful, you know, memories to have. Um, um, you know, like, Jim and I got married that you know recently and um we have a we have the guest book and it's I'm realizing it's over here in the corner. Um so we have that, you know, guest book. I knew who all showed up, hopefully, you know. Um, but because I have a I have no, I have a like I have a a spreadsheet of because I did all the inviting. I did all of that shit. Like I put right, all that right. shit together. So I have this list of all the people that I invited and and whether they said they were coming or not. Now some didn't, but that's beside the point. Um but I also have a physical copy of something True. that I can look at well probably look at it a year from now, uh, a year from the from the wedding and be like, oh, like just kind of nostalgia and looking for it. Um, that's why I'm like, keep keep tangible memories right. as well. I think that's fair. I mean, like, I, I think about that. I've been living in, in the place that I've been for here now for over a decade. And, I, you know, I remember when I first moved in, I didn't seem to have much. And now I look around and I'm like, Jiminy Christmas, I got too much shit. Um, you know, and so it's like I got to I'm part of me is like I think a theme for next year is going to be downsizing. And uh-huh. I don't mean like downsizing my life, quote unquote, just like removing a lot of stuff that that I've accumulated that yes. especially I don't interact with anymore or don't uh-huh. utilize. I've got so much goddamn electronic stuff it's ridiculous. Um which is which is ironic to think back when I was in my 20s and how like I desperately wanted a cell phone and I desperately wanted to have a laptop. Like I just wanted to have technology to be cute like connected uh-huh. um and now we just take it for granted because you know we hold a, com- a computer in our hands like nearly all the time um so i agree with you like to have those those records of things um because they are important it's ironic that you're you know you mentioned about running into someone because i reconnected earlier this year with somebody that i've always admired and kind of looked up to and i've sort of had a crush on and their life has transitioned in several different directions. And to my knowledge at the moment, they are not seeing anybody. Mm. Um, And a part of me thinks often about that when I see posts from them. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting about it is I think to myself, I catch myself thinking about that, that thing, you know, about the fact that they're, single i guess again is the way to phrase it (laughs) and so a part of me is like pay attention like if you're if you're focusing on that and paying attention to that like is that is that because you think there was an opportunity before and you didn't take it Mm. and so that's one of the things i'm kind of saying is like as something presents it don't shy away which is ironic of me to say because i mean i i went to hibernation years ago vending fell madly head over heels in lust with a gorgeous man that i briefly dated because i went when the weekend was over like i was just puppy love like 
wanted to follow this person everywhere that they went, like, which is so kind of silly now looking back on. I was like, you didn't know shit about this person. Um, (laughs) I didn't want to. I mean, I wanted to know everything, but I was just like, and and we're still like social media friends. And so I see posts from them and my God, they're still still so fucking sexy. Anyway, and, and, you know, they're aging. And so now they're looking even sexier with age. Um, (laughs) So I bring that up because I find it ironic that I'm thinking about, like, the road not taken. Mm. Like, a expression not given. And I think that's what, like, adulting gives you, like, gives you the ability to have hindsight and to look back on your youth and to, like, pay attention to the things that you weren't paying attention to in the moment, right. I guess is the best way to to phrase yeah. that and say that. Um yeah. As, as an example, someone, you know, was talking to me recently because I haven't had drench for a, a number of years. They were like, are you ever going to have it again? And I was like, well, I would like to. I said the complication is I have a second job and that second job in the evenings takes up a lot of the time that I an effort I put into DF for, for many, many years. And mm-hmm. so it won't be the same. I mean, it automatically won't be the same because of COVID. And then I was talking to this person about how the landscape has really changed. And in the bear community, there's not that many bear events like there used to be. Um, I think ever since COVID, a lot of that has diminished and it's because entities really, you know, took a step back. Um, and to my earlier point, you know, with the, the Berg bears, um, closing down, there's not as many bear clubs, Mm. um, technology has advanced and there's not as much like need quote unquote for connection. You know, that organization came about, um, because people wanted to get together for a common, you know, um connection and it originally started as like guys who like to ride motorcycles um and then it like moved in a direction of being more about a social group and eventually the person who founded it kind of took a step back they i believe i read in the recent historical records some people were saying they got busy you know with their job and stuff and so some other people took it over and eventually it got really like kind of big but this was a time where we you know the Internet was sort of newer. It definitely didn't have the social media connections like it does now. Mm. Um, so the whole – like the landscape was just very different. Yeah. And I think the the hindsight is looking back and being like you don't know what the future is going to hold for you. And yeah. one of the things that we I think we all can be guilty of falling into a trap is that today will be tomorrow and the day after and the day after. And if we don't pay attention – Things do change mm-hmm. and they do alter. And then before you know it, time has passed and you're like, Jiminy Christmas, like I have gray hair. Where the hell did that come from? Do you know what I mean? And you're like, or I've now I'm, you know, I have to think constantly because I had a milestone birthday this year. I'm in a different bracket. <laughs> like, luckily, when you when you put your age selection down on a lot of things now, like they don't do it by the by the exact decade so i yeah. haven't quite crossed over into a new bracket quote unquote but like my age is a specific thing and i've never really thought that much about it well when i was in my 20s i was neurotic i had like i had a panic <sighs> and a meltdown because i was like turning 20 in college and i was like i haven't achieved anything with my life um, baby oh, oh that's yeah. so sweet <laughs> <laughs> no. I was like so high strung and anxious because I was like, you know, people didn't understand. It was kind of comical because they were like, why are you like so upset about like turning 20? And I was like, but look at me. I haven't done anything with my life. And they're like, so? And I was like, no, you don't understand. People have been Olympians. Like, you know, composers have made like concertos. And they were like, wow, okay. You need to (laughs) chill the hell out. Like, (laughs) (laughs) okay, honey. Mm. Right. Because like that was like, (laughs) wow. I should go to therapy about that Um, (laughs) because it's so revealing about like my, my expectations of myself, like to have these standards, you know, that I was going to like change the world and accomplish things in a certain way. Yeah. And then I learned over time to like, kind of not be so, I don't know, angsty. (laughs) Yeah. It's funny um, that you mentioned connections and things and, and organizations. Um, we were talking about the Sin Simons Morris CMC um, earlier, and um, uh, this this concert is 
at least for a few years, is going to be um, one of our members last. Um, they're moving away. Um, he's been a he's been a board member. Um, he's moving due to his job. Um, um, actually, he's moving to Austin, Texas, Jeff. Oh. Um, um, mm. And uh, but because of this, he was he was um, you know basically saying at our concert he was kind of saying goodbye, as it were. Um, and one of the things he mentioned was like he's planning on auditioning for the Austin um, Gay Men's Chorus, the Capital uh, City Men's Chorus. Capital City, yes, oh. Capital City Men's Chorus. Hold on. <laughs> There we go. It was sad, <laughs> so I had to do it again. It's okay. Um, but he was saying, like he was mentioning, like they're they're a larger group, and he doesn't, you know, um, he doesn't know for sure he's going to get in and all that stuff. But he was saying that he doesn't feel it will be the same, even though it'll be a chorus and what have you. He says it wouldn't be the same because he, this group, helped him find the connections uh, when he came here. Um, a few years ago, and that has been the best part of this or, our organization has been, you know, getting those connections and being involved, and and you know that he doesn't know if that will be the same going to this larger city with this larger chorus. Um, he doesn't think it's going to be the same, which, you know, it, he could be right. He could be wrong. But it was very interesting to me because you were talking about that with, like, the Berks Bears. And then, you know, the whole point of them was, like, find, being connected. And I will admit to that. I think our life has changed because we, in a sense, are tenuously connected to each other in through, like, social media and what have you. Like, we all kind of have this tenuous connection to people all over because of these things that we put out there on the internet and um it's not the same and as right. someone who is now the vp of membership for organization and trying to get people to come like how do you get them to come when the well there's many meth methods to get them to come but yes yes <laughs> Ah, anyway, uh, um, but the idea of bringing in people when the landscape of the world has changed, mm. where when the chorus was founded, for example, it was founded because, oh, hey, people around us are dying and we are singing at their funerals and all of those kind of things. And we are scared people in this, com in this, in this not bubble, but we're the scared people in this community trying to find something that brings us together. And this was something that brought us together without it being a sexual thing or, or what have you. And it's different now. Mm -hmm. that was 30 plus years ago right. it's different now so how like that's like the i that's been my job for the past year so far is to like what do we do to make things make a chorus um a commitment a priority again for people right so but again you know to get it, bring it back to the subject. Um, I appreciate the connections I've made through the chorus. I've it's been part of the adulting, as it were. Is that's another thing I would say is find your tribe, um, if that makes sense. Um, right. As some as I've I've talked about earlier. As someone who didn't have a lot of friends, you know, in high school, you know, what have you growing up, um, I found friends through, you know, the things I did through the chorus, through um, the court when I was a member of the court. I, I found people that I could get to know and get to talk to through shared interest, and that has made all the difference for me having these friendships that have been long lasting and, and wonderful. And you want those friendships. If you have 
friends that you've known since high school, college, or even elementary school and what have you, good on you. That's great. Um, but sometimes it's not always that easy. And especially if, say, they move away or you move away, um, you're gonna, it's going to be a little bit harder. But try to see what you can and try to maintain those friendships and maintain those connections and find those shared interests and find that group of people that you know and will be there for you. It doesn't necessarily have to be a partner, a romantic, you know, thing, but that is part of it too. But finding a tribe of people that will be your friends till the end is an amazing thing to have. Yeah, I mean, I agree that having connection with others is, is an important thing. And I think um, younger generations now have utilized technology to that advantage and like gaming online um, Twitch as a platform has really like given so many people the ability to have connection with others without actually being near each other. Like I think about uh -huh, that with, uh -huh. you know, one of my best friends that I see online that games and they're friends with people like, across state lines, across time zones, across countries, like around the world. And, you know, they, some of them, they have not even met in person mm. ever. And yet, you know, they, they have a bond, they've created a community and, you know, do a certain things and communicate with each other and are supportive of each other. Um, and so I, I find that intriguing because again, we're part of that generation where it was like, you know, as, as some of the, think memes you know have talked about it's like when i was a kid like time wasn't an issue quote unquote like you know like you weren't you were basically especially during the summer it's like your ass got kicked out of the house and it was like go away don't come back until until the the lights come on on the street lights you know what i mean it's like and that was it right. like you were just kind of on your own doing whatever the hell you were doing so it's like you know you're busy running around you know and and you know probably maybe doing things you shouldn't do um but you know, it was just a very different time, <laughs> and and uh, so you you went out into the physical world and did physical things because that's what existed. So like yeah. you made connections, like you hung, you met people at the corner bodega, store, deli, whatever, uh -huh. you know, and and found out like oh, like these people are also into comic books or certain you know pop culture things, whatever that may be. Um, right, and and so that. I think has an effect on how you become you, so to speak over time. Um, yeah. Like, and I think, so looking back on my life now and that I'm older and thinking about like adulting stuff. Yeah. There are some things that I kind of wish I'd known. Like, you know, I feel blessed that when I went to school, elementary school, as a matter of fact, like we got taught about in math class, how to do a checkbook, how to balance your finances, like how to, account for deposits and withdrawals like uh -huh. how to have debits and like do those kind of things and um i had home ec i think we talked about this before you know it's like so i had to learn cooking and sewing also shop um and and I, those are things that i feel from what i understand is like not really done as much anymore which is unfortunate because i think you know as i've grown older and i look back on things there are there are stuff that you will uh, do in, in different ways. So like in the past year, I've been on a journey with my vehicle. Um, for those that don't know, this is a part of like the adulting thing. <laughs> I've had my vehicle for 13 years. Um, in my driving life, I've had three vehicles. And I knew when I got to year 10, I was crossing the threshold of borrowed time. Like this vehicle, the, the, Three years into owning it, the manufacturer no longer made the vehicle, made automobiles anymore. So, like, I was going to have X number of years ahead where, like, parts and service were going to be available, and then it was going to become more and more difficult. So that's why when I hit 10 years, I was like, okay, I got some borrowed time. And then earlier in the past two, couple of years, I've had a couple of issues um, that were significant, kind of costly, and, you know, some people were like, are you sure you still want to drive the vehicle? And I was like, well, why not? Like, it's my baby. Um, <laughs> and because I became, you know, very attached to it. You know, I had it for over 10 years. Um, I had the previous car for like 10 years. So, like, you know, I, I've 
grown attached to these possessions, quote unquote. So long story short, I went to Cincinnati at the beginning of November. On my way back, uh, or no, after I got back into Erie, my car died, broke down. And so the past couple of weeks have been this big lesson in adulting about what do I do about the broken vehicle? Getting it fixed. The, the, the thing is, there is a part available, but it could be two weeks to two months before they can fix it. And there's a part of me that's like, this is sort of a sign. Like, you are you are crossing that threshold where, like, it's gonna, just going to get more and more expensive. Oh, so, uh, over the past couple of weeks, I have been in the process of acquiring a new vehicle. And adulting is about learning about how to handle a significant purchase. And yep. financing and mm -hmm. coverage and like repairs and insurance. I mean, just like there's so many things, plus the passage of time. I haven't had, to, like, I haven't really paid attention to vehicles in like uh, over a decade. So now mm -hmm. they come with all these goddamn features <laughs> that I don't know because they weren't my thing before. Um, so I was like, oh, all right, that's a thing. Now, now it's sort of standard in, in a lot of models that you get a rear backup camera yeah. um, that you can have, you know, this, that or the other. And so I like was on this whole journey of late. And I guess that like if I had to give a lesson was be to say, like, pay attention more <laughs> like. Yeah, the, there, there's a there is something and I. <sighs> this has been my personal life lesson. I don't want to project this onto other people, but there is there is lessons to be learned and not necessarily pleasant ones when it comes to complacency. And by that, I mean, if you become very comfortable with a thing and you don't think about the future and like a change and an alteration, that change when it comes can be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. That happened with my career in private sector. I worked at it for a long time. I knew that like we were probably getting to the end of a cycle and that they were going to be making some changes. And when they made that change in the end of 2017, I think it was, um, I wasn't blindsided, but I also wasn't really ready. Mm-hmm. Then I spent the next year not working, which is something I wasn't ready for. And that really like took a hit to me on several fronts. My ego, my like self-worth, my value, because I didn't realize how much I prized being a productive member of society, like having a job and making an income and all that kind of stuff. So right. all that is to say, I've had these things where you know, you, you get okay with the way things are, but the reality is it's not going to stay that way forever. Yeah. And so knowing ahead of time that like there will come a point where most of us will become orphans. As someone, a, a dear friend of mine pointed out years ago, um, they're, they're, one of their parents had passed away a significant time ahead. And then when their remaining parent had passed away, they post online, they're like, well, now I'm, now I'm part of the orphan club. And that really hit me hard. And I was like, mm. oh, I was like, yeah. what the hell? But then I was like, oh, right. They're correct. Like, they no longer have any parents. Yeah. Um, and so I think about that as a person who only has one parent now. And, like, that's the thing that happens for most of us is that you will have. Gary. You lost okay over there? There he goes. <laughs> Please hold. You lost to Gary. Welcome back. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Now we can. Now we can. I don't know what's going on. Like your background's gone. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Things just got all wacky, and it was like, blah, blah, yeah. blah. I got all these messages. Yeah, you got you got you scrambled, uh, not scrambled. Like your your audio, just we heard a little static and then we heard nothing at all, and then your video dropped. That was weird. Yeah. Anyways, I was talking about <laughs> being just like comfortable with things, and then like having and and not paying attention to the fact that stuff will change. Uh huh. Um, and that people will no longer be around. Yeah. Uh, for various reasons. 
And so like, you know, hello, the computer issue. Here's an example. I probably need to get a new computer in the future. Like this one is not going to last forever. Right. Um, you know, it's just those type of things that I think we, we yeah. maybe don't take for granted. Yep. I'm also, you know, a victim of, of, I think our generation where it's like you bought things and you kind of had them for a long time. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not a person who like acquires something and then just is like, eh, you know, and then tosses yeah. it or gets rid of it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the idea of things, you know, getting older and like complacency is thing is, is, is something I've had to deal, deal with. Um, it's one of the like challenges as the, like I've been talking about with the chorus we've been dealing with is um, we're trying not to stay doing the things we do because we've done, always done them before. Like that has been our, one of our challenges is instead of like, Oh, let's just go with these people because or do this, do it this way because we've always done that and it's been good. Like, let's maybe think outside of the box a little bit and maybe try to find something different and new to kind of one revitalize us potentially or make a new connection that could potentially help us out in the future. Like, that's the whole idea behind it all. From a personal standpoint, um, I agree with you. Um, I've had random things that have just happened. I was, you, when you thought about it in technology in particular, I was realizing, oh yeah, like the other day, um, our um, Echo that we use for the Alexa, um, just like I had an alarm set and it just, it, it didn't work. And it wasn't because it wasn't connected to the internet. It was connected and all that stuff, everything was there. Nothing could change. But for whatever reason, it just randomly decided to be like, I'm not going to work this mo- this morning. So our alarm didn't go off, which, you know, woke us up. We, you know, woke up around that time. So it was, we got up okay, but it was just random surprise. Like, oh shit, like, like it was supposed to go off at seven and it's now 7.30 and we're waking up. Like, oh, what's going on? And then looking at it and being like, like the one I have upstairs in, on the, on my nightstand um, has a, it has a clock on it. Um, the clock wasn't showing, so I knew something was up. Um, and it didn't respond when you when I called the name, so I don't. Um, I didn't know what was going on. Now, all it took in this situation was a simple unplug and plug it back in. That that's kind of how it works. But there could come a time where that's not going to work. It's just it's just not going to work. Um, the other, there goes Gary again. There he is. Um, the other issue was um, we have um, smart plugs. Um, and when we got our new internet system, they randomly stopped working. But it wasn't because, no, no, this was our old, this was when we were with Spectrum. Our old system, just they randomly just, they had been connected for, again for years and all of a sudden they just stopped working. And we found out why. It was because um, for some reason they only work on five, three, it was either three or 5G or one or the other. And the internet that we had was doing originally was doing two d- different ones, but now it was doing one and it was only doing the, I think 5G. So they didn't work on that. So I had to find a way around it and it just became a whole big go deal. So it was, it was interesting, but again, like you were saying, it's just the idea, like everything was working fine and then all of a sudden it wasn't. So how do you react to that? That's the important thing. Don't panic too, too much, but um, keep moving and keep on going. Kind of like when every time Gary's video has just dropped like <laughs> randomly the past few seconds. <laughs> just like, I'm just going to try to keep talking and not let it get to me. <laughs> yeah. Anywho. Oh, what lessons? Other lessons. Um, I do have one. I was trying to think of what I was, how to say it. Um, yes, 
This one's important. Um, and it comes from my husband, who is also a financial advisor at this time, at this time, um, make investments, um, put money in something like, uh, 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 Roth IRA or a, 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 um, CD certificate of deposit, something like that, put some, put money in something so that you have something that you don't touch that is accruing money. So that if you need it for an emergency or something, you can actually get it as mm. opposed to like, I have, like, I'm, I'm probably going to be doing this next year. Um, I have the money that I got from my father's house. sale. it's sitting in my um, savings account for at my bank. Yes. Is, is it accruing money? Yes, absolutely. And not a whole lot. Cause it's just the general basic little interest that you get for the savings account. But, um, I could take some, probably take some of that, put it in a savings account or uh, not a savings account, put it in a Roth IRA or something like that, and have it be making more money for me. And this is the time to do it. Don't wait until you're 40 or 50 to try and get something like this done. At that point, it's too late. There's no point in trying to do it. Do it now or do it when you're younger. If anyone on our in our podcast listening audience is you know in their 20s, do it then. Put like a small amount of money into a, into a, 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 a account of some kind that accrues interest over time, and don't touch it. And if you can, add more to it o- over time, but don't touch it unless you absolutely, absolutely, absolutely need to. And you will find, like when you retire, oh, you have all this wonderful, you know, money that you can use. You know, speaking on those. Along those lines, Damon, I was thinking about, um, I was watching a comedian recently, and they were like, the biggest advice I can give to somebody that's younger is get life insurance. They're like, just do it. Just do it. It doesn't cost much, but it gets worse when you get older. Like, you get life insurance when you're in your 30s. It's more expensive. It's more expensive in your 40s, 50s, 60s. Like, the older you get, it goes up, and it goes up, and it goes up. And then at a certain point at the threshold, like, becomes really expensive. Uh Um and I kind of agree with that. Like I didn't, but that's the whole thing about youth. Like when we're younger, we don't think about those things. We're like, oh, blah, 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 blah. You know, it's like, you know, I fall down, I bounce back up. No big deal. But that's not always going to be the case. And the other thing I think I will say, and I think it may have been mentioned in, in the last episode, um, listen to your body. And, and take care of yourself. Um, 100% that. Yeah. Yeah. All of the things. Um, it feels weird to talk about. And it sucks to think about medical stuff. Because you don't want. You know. We all have those. Especially here in the States. We know that. You know. Stuff costs money. And you don't want to have to. Deal with all of that shit. But I can assure you. Um, it, 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 it can get a lot worse. It can get a lot worse. Um, as someone who, let's see, go back to 2018 when I had the diverticulitis, um, situation where, um, I went to the emergency room, um, uh, because I literally couldn't poop or I was having this intense pain in, in my gut and, uh, having to learn um, what that is and how painful it can be and that it is now something that I have to kind of monitor for the rest of my life. Not to an extreme, but I do have to, like I take fiber every day. Um, I have to um, drink lots of fluids and keep like sort of, a, you know, listening and body like, maintaining of like how are my guts feeling because you know something that may be minor oh that little pain yeah that's that could be like the start of something big um when i like when i went to the doctor when i went into the emergency room in 2018 i had a minor tear Mm -hmm. a minor tear can become a major tear and a major tear becomes a really big problem um so 
listen to your body and take care of yourself. I know it sucks. Get a primary treating physician. Um, that part, especially if you can. Uh, yeah. No, I hear you on that. As a person who um, is currently fasting because I'm having my A1C blood sugar test done in the morning, uh -huh. that's just a thing you kind of don't think about when you're younger. You're no. like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, it's not, it's not, again, it's not something you think about. And someone who's now in his 40s and thinking back like just 10 years ago and going, Oh yeah. Like I was, I was on top of the world. I was looking really good and, and all this stuff. And um, now I'm dealing with, you know, weight management and trying to figure out how to um, lose weight so that I can continue living. Um, I don't have major issues, I'm, but I, but I, I'm on heart medications now. I have blood pressure meds and stuff that I take every day. Um, like I said, the fiber and all that stuff, having to maintain all of this and drinking a shit ton of water all the time. It's becoming a, it's good. It, it, it's because you, maybe you didn't do things, you know, younger, you know, when you're younger, but you know, sometimes, you know, health and things happen, but also you can potentially know warning signs of things before they happen. I agree. I th I think that's where like our vanity gets in the way, uh -huh. because we're young and it's like I can eat all the cheeseburgers I want, motherfuckers, and then you get older and then you're like, oh, I have high cholesterol. I might have a heart attack. Oops. <laughs> Maybe I should have eaten spinach more. <laughs> Anyways. So there's there's those things, um, yeah. So those are those are some of my thoughts. Building is hard. It is. That is true. I, I think I said something the last time, Jeff, about how like you know we had it easier when we were younger because people took care of us. So it's like you just got up, you went to school, you came home, you had a meal, like you played games, you did whatever, you did your homework, yeah. went to bed. That's because somebody else had responsibilities over you. And right. when that's not the case anymore, well, then you better yeah. learn about this thing called balance. Mm -hmm. How to make it all happen. Yeah. Like, I have my job, and I'm very happy that I have it because it provides the money that I can do use to do the things that I have fun with. That was when I was... Um, complacent in a in a, a clerical position that I'd had for years I was very complacent in it and the reason I was complacent in it was because I literally came into work every morning I knew what I was doing every day I left at 5 5 30 and that bit um I had the evening free to do what I wanted I had um the weekends free to do what I wanted I didn't have to worry about any of the things but um years ago my boss's boss um, at the time was like, you know, you can do more, you can do better. You're just complacent in your job because you don't want, you don't want to break that status. You're used to it. It's what you're used to. And I was like, oh shit. And she was right. She was very much right. Um, because it was a, it was an easy task that I was using the littlest bit of uh, bit of brain power on because I could do it. Now I'm in a job where um, I'm happy ish, I will say, because I have to, I, I get to use my brain more. I get to think more. I have to make decisions on things. Um, and that's great because I'm not having to plug and chug and do data entry something that someone can just very easily do very quickly. I have to literally think every time I put something down, which is an amazing thing to think, to have. Um, but it also, it does still give me my freedom to um, do the things I love, like CMC, 
like the Cincinnati Men's Chorus. I don't. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, here, here's... Uh, we actually talked about this last time. But you make a good point. However, there are some times when you have people who like the security and stability. Yeah. Where it's like, look, I just want to do this. That, that's it. I'm good at it. I like it. I'm enjoying myself. I'll stay right here. Yeah. Don't necessarily need a promotion unless I'm absolutely interested in it. I like my job. I'm going to stick here. Yeah. This is where I want to be. You know what? Right. It pays the bills. I can do the things I want to. Which personally isn't much, but you know. Yeah. That's what it and is. I mean, yeah. And as clarification, like, I don't think. I was I wasn't trying to say, and I don't think Damien, you were trying to say that like being okay with your status quo, whatever that thing is, like that some might view as complacency is necessarily a bad thing. I know for me personally, as as my experience and witnessing it in others, it tends to create crises in your life though, if you're not thinking ahead about change yeah. when it's put <laughs> upon you. Right. And by that I mean like my car. Um, you know, my job, like these were things that I had to deal with, um, like my mother's passing a little bit, you know, like I, there was some sort of preparation, but not really. Uh -huh. And and so I just say those things as like, you know, those are the things I think of when people are younger, um, yeah. that you, you know, but I agree with you. If you, uh -huh. if you are comfortable with what you have and things are going well. That's good. Just be aware that winds of change will come, whether you are paying attention to them or not, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> it, and I will, I think that's sort of the, I would say that's the, the, the takeaway is be comfortable, but be prepared because you never know what's when something's going to happen. My, um, Oh, what was it? There was something that said, I think it was even during, maybe during COVID or maybe before, but it was something like always have three to six months of your um, bills saved up if you can. Uh, ideally. Because, right. yeah, because you don't know if something's going to happen and you lose that job, um, you, you won't have to... Um, potentially struggle you won't be lost you won't you will hopefully be able to maintain things until you find your next job right. or resource yeah it's it is challenging and it probably came about a lot during covid because i know that was something that i saw that yes absolutely in an ideal environment you have saved financially enough to sustain yourself for one solid year at whatever your current thing is that's a lot of money like that, uh -huh. that hardly few people in the U S I will say have that luxury because a lot of people are living hand to mouth, like paycheck to paycheck or whatever. Uh -huh. um, and it is challenging. I mean, you know, I, I benefited from when I had lost my job to have a severance and then like a little bit of money. So I, I kind of was okay, uh -huh. but as time went on, like I, I took the first couple of months to do what I wanted and Looking back, I'm like, eh, I really should have like maybe spent a month <laughs> like <laughs> doing what I wanted and then hit the ground running, not seven, eight months later, hit the ground running and be like, you know, I'm looking for a job and then getting turned down, turned down, turned down. Like that hadn't been my experience in the past. Like I'd always mm -hmm. kind of like look for a job, found a job, was interested in the job, applied, interviewed, got the job. And so, you know, to be in my 40s, my later 40s and have that not be the case at all. Like that was a part of the whole where I referenced like uh, my value system and my ego really took a, a hit because I was not used to that. Um, and so, yeah, I think that being, being prepared in various ways is, is something that folks 
maybe don't necessarily think about in terms of adulting. Um, Mm -hmm. And I get it. Like, and sometimes it was because, you know, the struggle was real. Like you were like trying to have, do the things that you wanted to have a roof over your head to be able to like pay your bills. And usually when you're younger, you don't have as much income available to you because you don't have as much experience, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, you're like, okay, well, I I do this thing. Um, And that is part of, I guess, the life journey. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything else or should we wrap up? I think we're good to wrap up. Yeah. Was there anything that came up in the previous episode that didn't get said here? Probably, but we're also mooning a bit long. Cool. Uh, tell us about your struggles in adulting. <laughs> you know that in plenty of ways, such as commenting on the blog at cubsoutloud.com. She can send me an email at cubsoutloud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail on 3612. We'll talk with 3612658255. And follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at cubsoutloud in the appropriate place of URL. If you don't want to put in twitter.com, you can do the shorter one of x.com. Up to you. Either way. Uh, you can join our entourage chat at bit.ly slash telegram dash col. Find out when we're playing and recording these shows by checking our Google Calendar at bit.ly slash calendar dash col. Get various accoutrements such as uh, various Cubs Out Loud logo shirts, a next generation shirt, a made to be shirt, in various different styles and various other things. As as well as com slash Cubs Out Loud, you can those designs were designed by Smashy. You can find more of his work at epublic.com slash user slash Smashy the Bear. You can also become a patron at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud or send us a donation at paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud. Please rate us and review us on the various uh, podcasting platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and Spotify. Uh, we also have, have this show on YouTube as a, as a podcast as well. As, and as well as DR. You can find me anywhere in the internet as box up, box puppy, box cup, box something or other. Dave. If you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me at Theater Cup 79. That's T H E A T R E C U B 79 on most bear related sites or on Facebook. Or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter slash X or pup umbra 79 on Blue Sky. Those are not safe for work. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gabra73. On Twitter, I have several accounts still existing until that, like, hellscape burns down. Yeah, whatever. Um, So uh, the not safe for work one is Gabra73XXX. I do have a Blue Sky account. I've had it for a couple of months now, and I haven't really did, like, an alt versus a regular one. So it's just Gabra73 over there. Uh, And... I'm, I, I guess I'm reaching a point in my life. Here's a part of adulting. I'm kind of like, do I give a fuck? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe, maybe that one will be the potluck. It'll be poured. It'll be political. It'll be everything in between. Who knows? Well, with that, say good night, everyone. Good night, everybody. Ciao for now. Bye.